Roll call, please. Roll call. Moved by Lloyd, seconded by Harrison. On the agenda, item number 
the complete thing. I want to hear exactly what you're basing this decision I'm on. I'm basing it on malfeasance that, that uh, Mr. Petroskis, uh, he should know the charter. Mr. Petroskis violated the charter, and as if you heard at the last meeting, that even Mr. Trotty admitted that they always didn't go by the charter, uh, I mean, uh, the charter. Uh, my feeling about, if you can't go by this charter, you know, uh, let's just say the Constitution's the same way. So I, I'm, 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 I feel that they, they violated it, and that's, that's my decision. No, you still haven't answered my question. I asked specifically, what has he violated in that charter? He's We're, violated the... The whole charter? No. I'm making my motion, Mr. Binkley. Chairman told him to. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. Roll call. Moved by Harris and seconded by Lloyd to dismiss Ray Petraskis as city attorney immediately. Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Lloyd? Yes. Councilman Binkley? No. Councilman Bradley? No. Mayor Goss? Yes. Uh, if I may make a short comment. Can we wait while the fireman's applause subsides? Yes. Uh, this, this wasn't at all unexpected as most everything else that has occurred. We've known for at least a couple days already that, that you had this in the works. I'm, I'm surprised, though, that your coaching was so bad that you couldn't even state some halfway decent reasons why you're doing that. <laughs> and, and, and let me, That the uh, that this job isn't very important to me, but my reputation is very important to me, gentlemen, and and, and I think we'll be seeing each other yet. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. I've got a mo uh, moved by Lloyd, seconded by Harrison. Due to an imme immediate emergency, <laughs> to hire a temporary attorney, Schiffman, Gage, and Quinn. Gage. 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 Schiffman, Gage, and Quinn. Schiffman, Gage, and Quinn. Attorney at law. Councilman Lloyd. So, discussion. Please. Discussion. Have to discussion. Mr. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Go ahead, Council. Mr. Sorry. Mayor, I see that we have Leon LeBrecht in the audience. Have we considered someone local for this, Jeff? Considering you guys have since you had hired the other attorney before you ever took office. <laughs> Miss uh, Bradley, we are not filling a position in a full time position at the moment. I'm not saying we are. I'm saying for a temporary position. Let's get someone I'm local. saying that you already had Schiffman in mind when, you, when this meeting started. He was here the last meeting and said that he'd been retained by the new council. I'm part of this new council in case no one's told you. Yes, I know that. So Mayor Goss, yes. one more comment. I challenge the fact that uh, Gary Harrison could even second that motion. Uh, he served subpoenas for Mr. Schiffman. I think that's a conflict of interest. And before this motion is voted upon, I, I demand to have an attorney general's ruling on whether he can even second that motion and be a part of this voting process, <laughs> even on a temporary basis. Mr. Mr. Binkley? Yes. I don't want to argue the point, but I haven't worked for Mr. Schiffman in quite a while, so, you know, this was before the election, and, it, you know, you just don't pick up uh, uh, attorneys out of the phone book, so, you know, I'm going to second the motion. Excuse me. You did work for Mr. Schiffman before the election? And you don't think that disqualifies you? Uh, no. I think my mother wants the job. I, I want to go on record as publicly challenging okay. the second of this motion, and I'm, pub I'm stating that it's a conflict of interest for Mr. Harrison to even be allowed to vote on this. Right. Okay. Any more discussion? Yes, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Yes. I move that we table this until that kind of ruling can be can be decided. You know, we're, we're going to be in enough legal problems. We don't need any more. And you know, I mean, okay, we've got rid of everybody now. That's wonderful. But let's not ask for more trouble. I'm saying this, Gary, for the benefit of this whole council. I'm a part of it. I think I, I think it should be checked on before you make that appointment. And I move that we table it until that. Now, if it comes if it comes where it's a not a conflict of interest, fine. But I think it's something that needs to be checked on. Let's act responsibly for once. Uh, there, so I move that we table the motion there, there until a, that could be determined. I call, no, I have to call the attorney. I support that. <sighs> oh, the rope on, on the, uh, moved by Binkley, seconded by Bradley, to table the temporary immediate hiring of Schiffman, Gabe, and Quinn as city attorney. <laughs> Councilman Binkley? No. Councilman Bradley? Yeah, yes, table it. Councilman Bradley? Yes. Councilman Harrison? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Councilman Lloyd? No. Mayor Goss? No. Motion carries. Motion carries. I have one comment, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Are we going to continue for two years to act like this? Without checking any laws. You know, gentlemen, I'm not, I'm not bringing these things up to try to put you down. I'm doing it for the benefit of this council and the citizens of Hazel Park. That's what we're doing, Mr. Binkley. Yeah, but you're not supporting it. You're not supporting it with any valid facts. That's what I'm asking. Just show me the facts, then fine. That's all I'm asking. Show us the facts, then do your thing. But you're not showing us the facts. And I think you have to. You're asking for big legal trouble. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Binkley. All right. Okay. We have... Okay, we need a... Attorney, is a representative of this firm in the audience by any chance? Oh, my God.
say one or two things here. Order. Order. Mr. Mayor, might I just make a comment or two? Yes. Why don't the citizens of Hazel Park judge the appointments on what is attained by this city attorney and by this council? Don't sit here and make fun of me or anybody till you see what legal services you get, what these legal services cost. If at any time this council says to me, leave, I don't want a contract. I'll leave in five minutes. I don't need a contract that's going to provide me with $148,000 over two years guaranteed if I work or don't work. So hold, give me the courtesy, and give I'll give you the break. same courtesy. Give us a break. Look give to us see what the legal work is. Look to see what the actions of the council are. And we you as the voting group, we've given it up. We'll vote with a recall. They've shown up already. They're straight You'll see, hold your opinion until you see what happens. Thank you. I'd be happy to serve in the capacity of interim acting city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Right. Let's carry on a communicating petition. We have a motion on the floor. Motion. Okay. I have roll call. Can we have some discussion? Okay, discussion. I'm sorry, I thought we had discussion. Marilyn, just for the benefit of the viewing eyes, could you repeat the motion that we're discussing? Okay. Moved by Lloyd, seconded by Harrison. Due to the immediate emergency we find ourselves in to hire the firm of Schiffman, Gabe, and Quinn, attorneys at law, temporary city attorney. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Uh, Council. <coughs> Councilmen Harrison and Lloyd, how much are we paying Mr. Shepman tonight? Nothing tonight. How about Pastor? How much? Nothing tonight. <laughs> he's, work, he's working for free tonight? That's right. Excuse me. He's, uh, he's going to be negotiating with uh, the temporary city manager there. It's good. It's good. Excuse me. The services Order. will be half. The, the savings will be half uh, of what we were paying the last city attorney. You already negotiated that. Okay. Okay. Is that Excuse me. Order. Well, all... Order. You give me the impression, are we negotiating for a permanent job? Or are, we, are you talking no, about that we're no, negotiating temporary. for the temporary, temporary wages? Temporary. I might say it's either temporary appointments. We have a media emergency here, and we've got to get on with this. Any more discussion? Roll call. Time. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, time out minute for uh, take change. Mm -hmm. okay. Order, please. All right. Uh, roll call. Moved by Lloyd, seconded by Harrison. Due to the immediate emergency we find ourselves in, to appoint as temporary city attorney the firm of Schiffman, Gabe, and Quinn. Councilman Lloyd? Yes. Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Binkley? No. Councilwoman Bradley? No. Mayor Goss? Yes. 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 Now let's get on with the uh, business. Uh, number two in communication petitions, uh, dissolvement of the Public Safety Department. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Harrison, this is this is something that the voters voted on January 4th, 1985. They voted that they wanted separate departments, and I feel that uh, uh, that the department should be separate. Uh, I make a motion that we dissolve the Public Safety Department and, uh, let's see, the Public Safety Department. Board. Uh, motion made by Mr. Harrison, second by Mr. Lloyd. Uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor, also 
on the PSO DPS salary, uh, which is item four, okay? You got transfer of funds to the general fund from the dissolvement down to, or from two to four, um, the, which concerns really the public safety department. Uh, I think uh, that if we can get a report back from the city, uh, city, or city manager within two weeks at the next council meeting. Excuse me, Mr. Harrison? Yes. We're still on item two and we We're haven't voted on it. Yeah, we okay. haven't voted on it. We okay. haven't skipped okay. down before. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Any, dis any discussion? Okay, Mark. Well, yes. I would suggest that the motion be amended that the uh, dissolvement of the Public Safety Department be referred to the acting city manager for report back in two weeks with those steps necessary to effectuate a legal dissolvement of the Public Safety Department. I think that's what you should do. Refer it over to the acting city manager for her to make a report back to you that it's your desire that the public safety be dissolved and you want to report back from her within two weeks. Do I hear You can't have a second. The councilman has made a motion. Okay. 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 No, I said you can have a motion. I make a motion that uh, we have a referral back from the acting city manager in two weeks. Support. Uh, motion by Mr. Harrison, second by Mr. Lloyd. Uh, do we have any discussion? Moved by Harrison, seconded by Lloyd, to dis dissolve the Public Safety Department and ask for a report back in two weeks from the acting city manager regarding this item. Can I ask, a, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, if we're going to dissolve it in this with this motion, why do we need a report back? Because you got contracts. <laughs> contracts. The um, what was what was the uh, Mr. Uh, Shipman? You would okay. If Ms. Bradley's asking me the question, as you have, as I understand, the new existing public safety director who may or may not. You have an existing public safety director who has a contract. I want to be sure, uh, and I'll meet with this acting city manager to review that we're not violating any laws, and I want to be careful and to meet two weeks more to handle this issue and be sure that there's no legal snag would be better than acting at this point and then have a lawsuit from somebody indicating that we terminated them uh, and that he had an existing contract. I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Shepard, um, I, don't know, I don't know who to ask this to, I guess. Uh, in, the, in the dissolvement of the public safety department, uh, are we addressing the issue of the police wages? How is that fitting in there? Is this one of the things you're talking about? or Right now, the issue is whether or not the public safety department should be dissolved. I want to have a report back to you with the acting city manager to tell you what steps have to be effectuated to do it. Then this council as a body decides what steps to do next regarding any contracts that you have that tie into the public safety department. We'd like to know why you're considering dissolving. Okay, I have another question. Um, that, that was not the motion that was made then, I guess. Please. Uh, the motion was made to dissolve it and then report back. Now what you're, what you're saying is not, not to dissolve it, to report back. My understanding is the motion, and maybe you heard it different. I thought the amended motion provided that the question of dissolution of the Public Safety Department be referred to the acting city manager for a report back in two weeks as to the proper steps to take to dissolve that department and have all the legal issues handled in a proper manner. Okay, that wasn't, okay, the, motion. That wasn't the motion. That wasn't the motion. Okay. okay, so we're not voting to dissolve it. We're voting for a report back of right, dissolving right. it. That's, right. Right. Can we That's have my reading understanding. Of the motion again, now? Hmm. Moved by Harrison, seconded by Lloyd, to refer the question of the dissolution of the Public Safety Department to the city attorney 
to go over the steps necessary to be sure that we are legal in our legal rights to do so. That's, right. that's the that's amended right. motion, but that was not the motion. That was the motion. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I wanted to clarify because my vote's going to be different depending on which motion it is. Yeah. The only thing I might like to correct, I think it was a reference to the city attorney. I think it was a reference to the city manager okay. and that I would work with the city manager. Right. It'll be referred to the acting city manager? That's correct. Okay. All right, we have, a we have one motion first that we have to that Mr. Harrison had made. So we're voting on the amended motion. He amended, he amended his motion. Amended, okay, fine. Okay, I read the motion, so now I'll have the roll call. Any more discussion? Yes, please. Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Uh, Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Lloyd? Yes. Councilman Binkley? Yes. Councilman Bradley? Yes. Mayor Dodd? Yes. Oh, yay! Mr. Mayor? Yes. Are we going to cover number three now? Yes. That's what I'm doing. Number right. three. Uh, transfer of funds from Public Safety Department to Intent Fund. M Mr. Mayor, I'd like, to, Mr. Harrison. I'd like to table that until we do get the report back. Support. Support. I beat you. <laughs> okay. Catch him. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. okay, number four, the salary of PSO DPS director. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Another Harrison. one I think we should table. I'd like to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'd like, I'd like to table item number four. I'd like to make a motion to table number four. Speak up. You're loud enough when you don't have a mic. You can talk and that's what we can hear you. I'd like to table item number four, please. Make a motion to table item number four. Support. Mm. Or any discussion? Okay, that'll be it. All right, number five, the city of Ferndale resolution, commercial tax. Mr. Mayor, motion to receive and file items five and six. Support. Any discussion? So be it. Number seven, um, spiritual assembly of the ba Bahas of Detroit, Michigan. Motion to receive and file, Mr. Mayor. Support. Support. Any discussion? See. Number eight, uh, Na National League of Cities One Day Regional Policy Leaders Seminar, the Ethical Challenge. Motion to receive and file. Support. Uh, any discussion? Number nine, Greater Michigan Foundation, Michigan Week, uh, May 17th to 24th, 1986. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to receive and file. Receive and file. Any support? Support. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. I think we have to make a determination at this point whether we're going to let someone select the mayor that we exchange with or are we going to select our own, Mr. Oh. Cross? I think you need to look into that. Okay, yes, I'm going to look into that uh, this week and have that taken care of. Thank you. You're welcome. So be it. Number 10. Oakland County Executive uh, Intergovernment Agreement for Disposal of Solid Waste. Uh, got plenty of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motion receiving the file. Okay. Any discussion? 
I yeah, I guess I probably should ask it. Um, yes. This is Manning. Are we a member? Uh, we're obviously not a member of this group. Um, okay, I was going. I wanted to ask. Uh, we are a member of one of the groups. So, are they soliciting us to join this group? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Number 11, Oakland County Division of Emergency Medical Service, uh, disaster control. Uh, 9-1 program status report. Moved to re Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, Council Moved I think they've already acted on this. Yes. I'll support. I think it's just informational, informational. Uh, letting us know how many people are participating, how many are still not uncommitted. Right. We have voted to go into this project pending the results of who participates so we know the final cost. All right. Any other discussion then? We'll be at 12. City of Warren, notice of public hearing, petition to vacate public alley. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Bradley. We receive and file. Any discussion? Probably should make the citizens aware, Mr. Mayor, as to when this is being held, yeah, so if they want to attend. Okay, this is going to be held um, Tuesday, January 14th at 8 uh, p.m. at the City Council Chambers in the uh, Edward A. Rural Judicial uh, Building on. Uh, 8 300 Common Road in uh, Warren. That's what they're doing is they're cutting off an alley in Warren. In behind Michael Street. Right. And they uh, notify us because it is within uh, so many feet of the, uh, of the city. Number 13, Oakland County Community Development Standards of Conduct for uh, Do we vote on that, right? Do we vote on that? Uh, moved by Bradley, seconded by Bingley. Yeah. We didn't vote on that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, just information. Okay. Uh, okay, 13, Oakland County Community Developer Standards of Conduct for CBAG uh, receipts. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Lord and Farm. Any discussion? We have support. Any support? Did I get support? Motion. Support. Support. That's support. How much? Motion received. Okay, no discussion. Number 14, Michigan Municipal League, uh, the regional meeting. This one is, I believe, this is in Holly, Michigan. Motion to receive and file. Support. Any discussion? Uh, number 15, Michigan Municipal League Annual Legislature Conference, February 26, uh, 1986, and this is the one held in uh, Lansing. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Bankway. Motion to receive and file with a suggestion that all five council members attend because the seminar is geared toward newly elected officials. Support. I think that we all Support. should go to that. Yes. Support. 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 Number 16, um, King uh, <coughs> Morgan, uh, congratulations and uh, justice. Um, Motion received and file, Mr. Mayor. Yes, and I would also just this, refer this to the uh, attorney. Any discussion? What, what is the motion, I guess? Are we receiving motion, filing or referring it to the attorney? Right. Receive and file. Right. I'll oh, support that. that. Okay. Lloyd. Uh, number 17, Le Legislative uh, Bulletin. Mr. Mayor, uh, move, to re move to receive and file. For a second. Support. Support. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, yes. Okay. Now, at uh, this time, we come to uh, public discussion.
Anyone wishing to discuss items which appear before or uh, after public discussion on the agenda should make this fact known at this time. Mayor and Council will move those items up to the considered right uh, after public discussion. There is a five minute limit uh, per person for public discussion. Public discussion is open. If you wish to speak, uh, step up to the microphone and state your name and your address. Hmm? Yeah. My name is Leon Lebrecht. I live at 22600 Oak Court. I think because of the reprehensible actions of this council, it reminds me of one thing that I've seen in the newspapers recently. When the will of a very few group of people imposes on the will of many, that's called terrorism. And I happen to think that the will of very few is imposed against the will of many in this city tonight. But in the immortal quote from the television show Network, I'm mad as hell and I'm going to do something about it. Yes, I'm Marie Patton and I live at the, on the corner of Ford and Goulston. And this is a complaint about the noise at the Elias Brothers. Now they come there, uh, oh, at two, three, five o'clock in the morning and either deliver those big containers with food. They're the size of a double door. And uh, they, they're not particular about how much noise they make. And I have, uh, I have complained to the police department several times. And as far as I know, there's nothing ever been done because they're still doing it. <coughs> At two o'clock um, Sunday morning, they were out there throwing those things around. Uh, I, I shouldn't think that would be allowed. What's your name again, ma'am? Patton, P-A-T-T-O-N. I have lived there through uh, a Clara Mays restaurant, through Sambo's restaurant. Never any problem with anything. We never, nobody had anything, any complaint to make. But now we've had plenty. Um. And I think my friend has got something to say here, too. <laughs> I'm Grace Haynes. I have been living in Hazel Park for 30 years. And I never had rats before. <laughs> but I sure have got them now. And it's either from my next door neighbor, which lives at 256. And I have called the inspector for different and different times. Nobody's ever come out. He has got a junkyard there. He's got two strip cars and another old junk car. And I know it's a rat bin. Besides, uh, big boys not taking care of their garbage either. They don't have it covered, and it should be covered. Okay, Ma'am, uh, could we, Mrs. Mann, yeah. is there any way you could check into this and, and check into some of the problems they're talking about here as far as like rats and, and garbage? And there's one lady sitting over there Rats even get in her motor of her car. She lives close to me. Would you, uh, would you please uh, take and uh, talk to Mrs. Manning and give you a name and address, and she will have someone check in for this? I wish you would, because the rats, I can't take them. We've been there 30 years and never had this before. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Next. The name is Tammy Lebrecht. I live on Crosley. For 30 years I've attended council meetings. I've never, never in 30 years have seen a council meeting conducted as this one has been conducted. Now, gentlemen, I came up here to congratulate the new members of the council and the mayor. But I feel that this is uncalled for now because I, I, I feel that you have hurt me deeply. And by saying hurting me, I mean you're hurting everybody in Hazel Park. I don't know where you're getting your orders from. I don't know who you're seeking your information from. 
but you've done a very, very naughty thing and you should be spanked for it. Very, very strong. Firing, firing the mayor, I mean the, the uh, attorney, the city attorney, when you're not in the, even in office for 90 days, and if you've read your charter, if you've read your charter, you're not supposed to, uh, you could not do anything like that for 90 days. Now, uh, Mr. Cruz, uh, I mean, cause, have you read your charter? Yes, I have. And uh, did, you, did you see this, where it stated that you are not to, you could not uh, fire anybody unless it is a, uh, an actual case of, of uh, uh, thievery or something like that, that you could fire the city manager or the, uh, or the city attorney. Now, I have nothing against this gentleman here. This poor guy has come in, and, and he's, he's being put up against us. Yeah, no, no, now shut up and let me talk. Now, this is, this is the truth. This, is, this guy comes in, and, and he's only doing his job. I mean, he's trying to do what he's supposed to do. But now, now Lloyd and Harrison and Bob, where 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 did you where did you get now if you if any of you have read your charter and I used to be on the charter committee so I certainly know what the hell I'm talking about you're not supposed to now what what were the reasons I just come in a little too late would you please inform me let me know what your reasons were for letting the city manager go Oh, what was uh, no i'm going to address you damn it now you talk to me now don't don't try to put the blame on the city uh, uh new uh, city attorney temporary city attorney you, i'm talking to you harrison and gauze and lloyd why did you let the city manager go i have to know because i'm paying your wages which is two hundred dollars a year <laughs> Can you tell me, Mr. Goss? Ms. Lebrecht, yes. we, as you said, read the city charter. I have read the city charter, yes, over and over again. All right. And before I took and made a decision, I made sure I read it over and over again. What's the reason? I also... Oh, yeah. I, I, also, I, also, I also took and read what Mr. Patterson also stated in the last council meeting. And then also the infractions that was committed. And to my belief, malfeasance was committed. Would you please, would you please uh, point out one thing that he did do if, with malfeasance? One of the things, for one thing, is accepting the contract, which it states in the city charter as if you said you've read it, it states in the city charter that the, the city manager will work at the will of the council. That's correct, that's okay. correct, and but... Also, also, Mr. Petrowskis very clearly, the last meeting, stated that they didn't always follow the city charter because things have not been done that way in many years. Well, I follow on one point. The city charter is the way it is wrote right now. If the case of things that should be changed, then they should have been changed. But you follow the charter the way it is wrote, not the way you want it to be. If you want it changed, then you take and you change it. Mr. Goss, I think that you really and truly want to do the right thing by Hazel Park. But I think you and your fellow comrades have done a terrible, terrible thing tonight. I think you should have at least, at least, had a public discussion about this and given us the right to, to find out whether this is true or not. I, I am, for one, am not a favor in favor of anybody who does a wrong, and I will fight for this community because this community belongs to me. And everybody in here are my, are my brothers and sisters. And I don't want anybody giving them a kick in the pants, you or nobody else. Now, Marilyn Manning is a very wonderful, beautiful young lady, and I will back her 100%, but I do not think at this time that she is qualified to be the city manager. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Lobel.
and Mr. Schiffman here, I don't know anything about this young man. Uh, Miss, your time is up, I'm sorry. It is up, yes, and so will your time be in three months. <laughs> My name is Eric Jervis. I live at 637 East Coy. I'm also a, own a business in Hazel Park. And I don't think the question was answered. And I would like, uh, Jack, your hand in notes back to Mark. You got some kind of reason you want to tell us why that you let Dan Potter go? Okay. 23 years. Yeah. He's done this city a lot of good before you even were running for election. He was running this city. And he did a lot of things good for it. And we'd like to know why, behind closed doors, this is a public meeting. We would like to know why, behind closed doors, you three people decided that when you came here tonight, no matter what, you're going to let these people go. You don't run this city. The, the people of Hazel Park run this city. You're supposed to do what we want you to do, not what you want to do. You want to tell us why? Mr. Potter is guilty of malfeasance, which is wrong to Speak up, Jack. Speak into the mic so we can hear you. Okay, Mr. Potter is guilty of malfeasance, which is wrongdoing by a public official. It violates charges C-24, Chapter 6, Section 616. Because of this, this violation of the charter by Mr. Potter, I made the motion. It's violation. Okay, would you like to explain to the general public what the uh, infractions were that he uh, uh, was accused of doing? Mr. Potter accepted over a $100,000 contract as a violation of the city charter. That is a violation by accepting a job? Now, what, did he accept it? It's a violation of the city charter. To accept a job? To accept a contract. He was not working under contract for, for the Hazel Park? Mm, no. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. He was not working under a contract? No, sir. And by accepting a contract, that's in violation of our city charter? Yes, sir. Okay. Was, let, let me finish. Let me finish. That contract that he accepted, was that offered by you, this council? It wasn't offered by this council. Did this council offer him anything, offer to work with him? Yes. Coming in here tonight, he had a contract, and he accepted it. It's on record, he accepted it. That's from the past council, is that correct? He accepted it. From the past council, that council's gone. I'm asking you, the new council, whether or not you'd even talk to him about working with him to keep this, sunny, this city operating as good as it possibly can. I'm telling you, at any time, he could have resigned and... and I'm asking you whether you asked him. Can't you hear the question? I did, I did refer and ask Mr. Potter when the contracts were first offered to Mr. Potter and at that time Mr. Potter told me that it was his prerogative for taking the contracts and I told him at that time there would be a challenge there would be a good chance that the contracts would be challenged and that's that's fine challenge the contracts we're not objecting to you challenging the contracts I want to know whether or not that this new council this is your first meeting isn't it Okay, have you? Uh, in public. In public. I want to know whether or not you've talked to any of these people about working with them rather than just arbitrarily firing them. If you have, you haven't done it publicly. And what you have done, you've done between the three of you behind closed doors. And that's not the way this city's going to operate behind closed doors. It's going to operate in the public. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start a recall petition. I don't know if it takes 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. But anybody that's interested in a recall petition, you get a hold of me, Eric Jervis, at my home or at the shanty, and we'll work together and resolve this issue. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Bunker. <laughs> I have a question. Um, Mr. Jervis, you're correct. Uh, this is the first meeting of the entire council. Evidently, there have been previous meetings. Uh, I'd like to know if you gentlemen feel so strong that Mr. Potter has created a malfeasance. Why did you not share that with Councilwoman Bradley and myself? I did that yesterday. I said I would. I, I thought that's what he did, but I wasn't sure. My I no. 
no one shared with me the fact that they act, that, that either one of those people acted under malfeasance, nonfeasance, or misfeasance, and were going to be fired this evening. The, the only thing that was shared with me, Mr. Goss, and you were kind enough to do right. it, the other two haven't even spoken to me, is the fact that they were going to challenge the contracts. Well, any fool can read on the agenda and see that's going to happen. Yes. Well, I want to know if, they, if these two people did such a serious crime, why the three of you took it upon yourself to make the decision to fire them when there's a body of five up here that need to know that information because we also help make those decisions or maybe you haven't met Councilwoman Bradley. Yeah. Uh, Second question I want to ask. Wait, he hasn't the first That's a good point. <laughs> okay. These people are wasting time. Okay. Mr. I'd like an answer to that question. Okay. Why was that Mr. not shared with either one of Mr. us? Mr. Finkley, yesterday I did share with you on the basis that I wasn't sure at the time, and which I wasn't until last night, of the exact decision I was going to make. And I did explain to him, I did explain to you at the time there was a chance that Mr. Potter was committing malfeasance. No, unless you, you misunderstood me. Go ahead, I'll well, tell you. When, when did you I'm discuss sorry. the fact you were going to fire it? With the rest of the council. I guess the whole point I'm trying to make is, is Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Harrison, when did you share that with either one of us? It takes more than one person to initiate this action and to vote it in. I'd like to know why we were excluded on something as major as this so that, affects, that affects the benefit of this town. And I, I demand an answer to it. As far as I'm concerned, I brought it up at the table, I made a motion, and that was discussion at the table. That was tonight. That's right. That's Did you right. just discover tonight that, they, that the act of malfeasance had been happened? Did I you just discover that this I evening? didn't go up and get on the phone and call up everybody and talk about it, okay? That's why there's five you of us. You obviously called somebody. That's why there's five of us. <laughs> Mr. Lloyd, if I see something is wrong in this city, I'm going to let you know and Mr. Harrison and Mayor Gauze and Councilwoman Bradley because that's no. our job as a group of five. I We're not individuals acting the way we feel or the way someone tells us that. I can't believe you did not know this was going on. Give me a break. <laughs> Maybe Councilwoman Bradley can see if she knew about it. It seems to me there was a lot of things that went on in this city that I didn't know anything at all. Mr. Schiffman's one of them. And that was long before we ever took office. Right. Needless to say, Mr. Gods didn't even bother to uh, give me the courtesy to give Mike to let him know that he was even thinking about anything. I have not received a phone call from anyone. Uh, Apparently, my vote does not count. Yes. Did you say yes to that? No, it does count. My second question is, you just stated that you let Mr. Potter go because he violated the city charter by accepting a contract. I'd like to know tonight specifically the section that he violated of the city charter. Okay. Charter. C this is the city charter. Got it? I've got it right here in front of me. Yes, I do. Okay. Charter C24, Chapter 6, Section 6.16. You have to wait for me to look it up. Go ahead. I just want to know. It was. Say that again, please. C24. C24. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Section 616. Section 616. Thank you very much. Good, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next. I'm Reverend Beverly Best, and I live at 23728 Davy. And I came to encourage, not to discourage, and I had other words before, you know, the meeting <laughs> ended up like this. I'm, I'm, um, I'm a resident here, and I'm interested in our city, and I came to encourage all of the councilmen I like unity, and um, a city that isn't in unity, you know, is going to fall. Uh, I'd like to also say that um, I'm very proud of our firemen. I'm proud of their wives because they take interest not only in their husband's jobs, but in the city, in the people. And uh, I'm proud because uh, I have an invalid father, and they came to help my father. I, I'm glad that we have firemen that care about our city 
It's just, I think, um, you know, right now we're not in unity and nobody likes, they don't like changes. Nobody likes changes. And we have do, new leaders and we'll have to expect changes. And, um, well, I'm proud of our, I'm proud of all the people that are on the council. It doesn't matter if they're meat cutters, it doesn't matter if they're janitors, real estate, it's people. You've got to care about people. I, I want to read something for all everybody here because we're all one. We're in we're in the city together, and uh, I've heard cursing at our council, and we have no respect. And I I mean all of them. <laughs> but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. And I'd like to leave you. I'd like to leave you with this and the council. If God be for you, who can be against you? You ready? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I am, I, my name's uh, Dave Veers. I live at 44 West Mahan in Hazel Park. And uh, I'm here to um, tell you that we're wanting to start a Guardian Angels chapter in Hazel Park. And that uh, we would uh, like to just tell the people that we're here for them and that uh, we think there's a lot of trouble that we can help do something ourselves. And there's a lot of us in Hazel Park that want to join it. And if there's any way you could maybe give us a school or something where we can train and uh, have our, you know, meetings and stuff. Perhaps a school. Perhaps a school or something like that. Uh, we have the chief of police here. And uh, I think maybe he'd be the guy to talk to about patrolling, you know. I, well, I, I talked to somebody down at the police station and uh, they were real, you know, good about it, but uh, we're kind of wanting to do stuff a little different, you know, start our own thing. That's about all I got to say. Thank you. Yes, my name's Rochelle Jervis, and I live with my husband Rick, whom we've already heard from, at 637 East Quay in Hazel Park. And um, I have a question uh, for the, I assume it's the acting attorney. Um, have you worked with cities before? Yes, I have. Can you name those cities and why, like, what cities have you been with? Number one is public discussion. You're supposed to be able to speak. I don't have to respond, but I want to tell you I've worked for the city of Novi, for the city of South Lyon, and the city of Oak Park, and the city attorney for that. I see. So you haven't really stayed with any of those cities, then? Are you usually an acting attorney? Is that generally what you do? I don't quite understand what you mean by an acting attorney. Well, I... I was requested to act here as temporary city attorney until arrangements could get in place to hire a city attorney. Nobody is born to be an actor. I see. It, did you just happen to be at our meeting tonight? No, I was told to be. Oh, I see. So it was prearranged, I see. And I'd just like to make a statement. It's not really a question to anyone. It's just that um, my husband and I have been here 15 years, and I was really proud of Hazel Park. And um, we have a lot of friends in different cities, and uh, all this... Um, mess that's going on and all this publicity and uh, bickering back and forth and the closed discussions and comments brought up that are made at parties that people don't attend or or even discussions in a bank or a supermarket or a home or anything really doesn't have much bearing on the fact that there seems to be people on our council that think they can make decisions for us rather than let any of us as intelligent adults and, and citizens of Hazel Park discuss. And I don't know, I, I don't understand all of parliamentary procedure and stuff, but it seems to me like the public discussion is at the wrong end of council meetings because 
we get no chance to say anything before you vote and make your decision. I mean, we don't get a public discussion ahead of time. We don't get to vote on things. And it seems to me that if the council really wants to do something this year, maybe that's something they ought to consider as a public discussion before before it's voted on and decided, and then all we can do is either get up and complain or commend or whatever our opinion or decisions are, it really has no bearing. I'm standing here saying how I feel, and right now I'm really embarrassed to be a, uh, a resident of Hazel Park. I really am. And that's about all I have to say. My name is Pete Marvin. I live at 23109 East Hughes, uh, Hughes Hazel Park. Uh, I'm a former council person. Uh, since we are quoting the city charter here tonight, that when a full-time city attorney is appointed, it is appointed by the city manager and approved by the council, not picked by the council. It's picked by the city manager. Read the charter. It says that in there. So if Mr. Schiffman is to be here at later meetings, it'll have to come from the acting city manager now and approved there. Just to, so we don't have no mix up the next meeting on who's picking who. Oh, don't worry. Uh, secondly, uh, I have a lot of animosity built up inside me tonight and I'm not gonna let it out here. Somebody asked me if I was sorry I lost the election. After seeing the circus that went on in this town tonight, I can say honestly, no, it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Thirdly, I was one of the three votes that brought Mr. Potter the contract and the city attorney. Since they've been terminated from office by the council, I wonder if the council wants me to terminate my residency here in Hazel Park. Thank you. Dorothy Searcy, I live on Hoover. I'm very upset, especially with Mr. Harrison, because prior to when he took office, he would not answer one question. Now he's all mouth tonight. I've never seen such three underhanded people in my life. So I'm, I am, and I will do anything I can, especially you, Mr. Harrison, to get you out of that seat because you don't deserve it. Anyone else for public discussion? Virginia Shepherd, 413 Schoolson. And um, we're trying to have our ramp built and still hasn't built, <laughs> if you can believe it. Anyways, what I would like you to do is to go over the tapes from the zoning board meeting because um, Bill, the, the person in the wheelchair, agreed at the meeting to go with Mr. Scott's plan, but if that plan didn't work, then the original plan had to be what they built for the ramp. And Mr. Scott doesn't seem to have any interest to look into it and find it out and still won't let us build the ramp. Well, we'll send that uh, we, uh, wheelchair ramp over on Goulson. Is there any way you can look at we'll, it? We'll let Mrs. Fanning take care of it. I'll check the minutes for you, Mr. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Diane Mazza Kelly. I live at 1421 East Maxwell. I have been attending council meetings for three or four years now, and uh, there's always been a lot of controversy. Anytime you have a group of people, no one's ever going to agree on everything. Um, a lot of people are here tonight I've never seen here before. Um, they seem to be very vocal in what they have to say when they're sitting back there. If, um, if you don't agree what this council's doing, where were you during election time? We were voting. Okay. You were voting. Well, it seems awfully strange. Excuse me, I have. I'm talking now. Um, 
There's been um, a lot of, excuse me, there's been a lot of screaming and yelling from the audience, a lot of rude behavior. Um, I, can, I can see, you know, it's difficult for everyone up there tonight. Not just uh, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Gauze, and Mr. Harris, and Mr. Binkley, and Ms. Bradley, too. They don't need to listen to that. If you have something to say... <coughs> That's exactly what I was talking about. If you have something to say, you have your five minutes here. Um, could I ask um, our acting city, uh, city manager a question? Yes. I would like to know, Mrs. Manning, how long have you worked in the city? I'll be here 25 years in August. And that is in City Hall? I worked 16 years in the city manager's office and uh, became a deputy in 77 and uh, then I was appointed first. Okay. Mrs. Lebrecht, you stated that you didn't think she was ready for this job. It was my understanding when Mr. Potter got the job, he came from the Recreation Department. I kind of think that maybe Mrs. Manning has a little more experience in that area that he started out with. I'd like to add to that. Okay. Like you're, you're just a you're sure. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Mr. Potter, Mr. Lebrecht, uh, Mr. Mr. Hmm? Mr. Potter, for many years, and he worked with Mr. Powell for 10 years. Mr. Brecht, I, any, I know, but a question to the okay, council for... Okay, to me. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Thank you, and I wish you all good luck, all of you. You're going to need it, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is yes, Richard uh, Allison. I live at 355 East Granite. Uh, all I've heard for the last few weeks is give these gentlemen a chance, give these gentlemen a chance. First night in office, they fire the city attorney, they fire the city manager, and what chance are you giving them to work with you? Uh, are you three in a union? Are you in a union, Mr. Harrison? Yeah, I'm in union. How about you, Mr. Lloyd? Mr. Gauze? Yes. Uh, how would you like for me to uh, arbitrarily say that, no, you can't have a union no more. You can't have anything. That's basically what you're saying to Mr. Uh, Potter. Hey, if I could get a contract, I'd take a contract, and there's nothing wrong with that. The violation of the uh, Does it supersede state law? Mr. Mann. Yes, Mr. Benson. I want to respond to one thing that Ms., uh, Mrs. Massa-Kelly said. Uh, I agree with her that we probably should not be subjected to that type of behavior. But I've listened to it for a year, and we were trying to go public safety. The only difference is the people doing all the loud gesturing had on silver jackets. I didn't think at that time that I should be subjected to that either, but I was. So, you know, if it's okay for them to do it, it's okay for the people to have an opposite point of view, I guess. My name is David Naud at 22640 Cedar Court, Hazel Park. I wish to address the council as a council, not as subgroups. Um, you ask the people to give you a chance, and the people, I believe, are here to give you a chance. But the council has not given a chance to Dan Parter or our previous um, city attorney. Um, I am appalled at the action as this council as a whole. I believe the council has to act as a whole and is not doing so right now. Um, you are here to represent the people, and the people, I believe, are not being represented properly. I, too, wish to pull network. I'm mad as hell, and I'm going to do something about it. Any uh, one else for public discussion? My name is Ron Berkeley. I was one of the Hazel Park residents that attended a number of the council sessions before the election. The first question I would like to ask 
concerning some of you people who weren't here is how come you weren't here before the election to hear what the past city council had to say now listen please listen to what i got to say i gave you the courtesy when you were up here give me the courtesy to hear what the last city council had to say in downing the people who were running for office they repeatedly stated all you people are doing is just grandstanding to try to get votes. To which I replied, and I was one of the speakers a couple of times, the people have a right to vote at election time for whom they wish to vote. Or is that not correct? We all, yes, we do. I also stated that at one time. I said we can even recall people, current people on the city council, if we wish to do so. That was before our new council candidates were elected and the new mayor. I'm proud that they are elected. I'm proud for what they're doing. I candidated for them, and I'm not ashamed to say so. They have rules which they are following. They have lawyers with whom they are consolidating their efforts to try to give you the best type of government possible. And I'm for them. Let's give them a chance. Mr. Mayor and Councilman, I don't know if you know who I am or not, but my name is Debbie Chandler. I am the daughter of Bill Husband, who does work with two of the men on the council. I am with Mr. Jervis tonight when he said he's going to get a recall petition because I'm right behind him because I'm going to recall three of you, too. Yeah. Anyone else for public discussion? Jim Curry in 5360 East Harry, and I'm a fireman. So you guys all take your big laugh now. Have a big laugh now, because that's all you people are here for. None of you were here before. You're all here now to criticize what these people do. It's their opinion that they're right. They made the motion. Let them sink or swim with it. You people want to recall them? Go ahead and recall them. You can do that. That's right. That's, that's what you people can do. If you think you can recall them, you go right ahead and do it. What they've done here, they've done because they thought it was right. Why didn't they have the whole council? The whole council voted on it. From what I see sitting out here, is they brought it. I'm sorry, I got the floor. You can come up here and talk after, okay? You can all come up here and talk. Do I have the floor or do you people have the floor? You want the floor? Here, take the floor. This, these, this is the type. This is the type of uh, atmosphere you uh, you blamed all the firemen for having this type of atmosphere. And if uh, you people don't like it, you know they called the police in here to have us removed. Why don't they do the same for you people? Wouldn't that be fair? Public discussion is to talk to anybody and everybody I want to. That's true. Public discussion is you can say anything you want. Maybe you should look that up in your charter. Maybe if you ask a question, I'll be quite to hear the answer. Why don't you look that up in your charter? I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. Can you hear that? Thank you. Thank you. He's got the floor right now. Please. Everybody out there in the audience, everybody out there in television has a right to recall these people if they don't like what they did. They made a decision and they did it. And now they'll live by it. You people all come up here and say, Dan Potter did this for the city, Dan Potter did that for the city. I'm asking, what did Dan Potter do for the city in the last 10 years? He eliminated, he eliminated uh, 40 employees in the city in the last 10 years. Our taxes are at the top still. He's done that. He's done a lot of things. If these people are right in their decision, so be it. If they're wrong, so be it too. They should be out of there. And I'll agree with that. If they're wrong in the decisions they make, I'll help recall them. 
They have an attorney up there. I would like to ask Mr. Schiffman, what, if any, thing did these people do wrong here tonight? I am asking Mr. Schiffman a question. Order. Why don't you let's focus in on the issues for two seconds? There's two separate issues, and everybody's lumping everything together. And listen to me. You can boo me and call me names and do what you want, and you'll only have to believe that I'm trying to tell it as I see it. The first issue is whether a new consul has the right to fire their present administrator. I don't hear anybody saying when President Reagan fires and puts his people in office, when Governor Milliken or Governor Blanchard puts his people in office, when the county executive puts his people in office. The answer is your charter, which was voted on by the citizens, the people of Hazel Park said, that break, break. Uh, we have a minute uh, break here for uh, tape change, please. Is whether or not the new council. Let's get into a little history of the charter. The charter was set up so that there are no staggered term of council, but that all five people are elected at once. It says that the city manager serves at the will of the council. So that's the first one. Right now, the way it's provided, everybody is elected at one time. So you decide in your own heart whether or not a council should have the right to have a person in there acting as city manager that they want, city attorney, that they what they want based on the, and the remarkable rights uh, by Mr. Marvin, based on a recommendation by Marilyn Manning and then a vote of the council, and I may not be here two weeks from now. Decide that. Then the next issue is, in your heart, do you think that Dan Potter and Ray are doing a good job? You're entitled to that opinion. But aren't these people who are elected entitled it's a government by will. They have that choice. And as Jim said, if they do wrong, absolutely throw their fannies out in so fast. The third issue is, isn't it really a waste? Here's a city that has all sorts of financial problems. I've heard three meaningful comments today. Two women who are bothered by rats. To me, that's more important than sitting and yelling at these kinds of people. Those are real concerns of citizens. A woman has a noise problem. That's what this council should be addressing instead of having to sit up here and quake because you're yelling at them. So the answer is decide those issues in your own heart. You don't have to yell at me. don't have to yell at them. Speak at the ballot box. I sincerely believe, and you can take it from here, there's no crime in having people who are maintenance people, work in a Delta Tessin, uh, good ordinary people making decisions. Because I think they're trying to make the right decisions. You may not like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too. My name is Mrs. Ferris, and I live on East Harry. I'm a resident of Hazel Park. And a question I have to ask the council tonight is, you have fired a mayor, you have fired a city attorney, and I would like to know how much you are paying now the acting city manager, the acting city attorney, how much money it is going to cost you if you go ahead with taking out your public service department in the next two weeks. And I'd like to know about our tax money. How are you going to lower it? I'm directing this to Mayor Gauzy, because I'd like to hear your opinion. You're the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Number one, we've already made the statement that the, the salary of the acting city manager has not been determined yet, or of the uh, acting city attorney. It will be determined, and it will be a reported to the people. The people will know it, all right? Well, number two, as far as, as number three, as far as lowering your taxes at this right at this time, I cannot really say because we just did get an office and we have to look at something, and we have to look at what exactly where the money is and everything. You, you can't just say how we're going to do it. We can never do it. I was wondering if you gave that any thought when you fired the city attorney and when you and when you fired our city manager. So have you given this any thought? How much money it's going to cost the taxpayers, the city of the Hazel Park? And also, if they go ahead with a lawsuit on you people, 
or even individually with lawsuits on you people, how much is it going to cost our city people? All right, I will, I will say this. If it was the cost with the two contracts the two gentlemen had, if we would honor the contracts, it would be close to about $300,000 that we would be paying out to these two gentlemen, plus the money they've already collected on retroactive pay, as I know Mr. Petoff has already collected his. Back to uh, June of 85, he collected a nice little check of around, uh, I think it was $17,000? $17,760. That he collected back. These contracts were issued, were offered a month ago as protection against this new council. At the same time, in these contracts, there was put a little thing that they got a pay raise, retroactive to June of 85. Mr. Potops, as we know, has already received his check. We're not really sure if Mr. Potter did or not. I'm not unaware of this, but I'd like to know if they go back with lawsuits on you people and you should lose, or the city should lose this, how much money is it going to cost us? It's hard, it's hard to say, but That's in, right challenge, it is. in charging it, all right. Given that thought? Let, me, let me put it this way. In the way the contract were wrote, we would have had to hold these people for three years, no matter if we'd have liked it or not, as far as this amount of money, all right? We were given the 90 days in those contracts, but if we would have released them in 90 days, we'd have still had to pay off that large amount of money. That was binding us to a two to three years contract with those two gentlemen, which has been stated, and it states in the charter that the city manager would never hold a contract with the city, he would be at the will of the council. By doing this, it, it, it tied our hands completely. Well, As I, far as the cost, I cannot really answer that. I, it, it's really hard to say, but you would have had a fight one way or the other. With having the firemen now being restored to the position that they were in before, do you realize how much money this is going to cost the city? Do you have any idea? And can you give me a figure? Not at this time, I can't, but I can tell you that How come you don't know this, and you're already the mayor? <laughs> you should know this stuff before you got, have gotten into yeah, the yeah, office the, of mayor. I know that it, I can't give you an exact figure. I do know that it's going to save money, all right? It's going to save money. That's right. Okay, we will wait and see. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Kathy Bush. I live at 63 Andreessen Court, where my husband and I have resided for over 20 years. This is not my first council meeting. I have been coming to council meetings periodically for over 20 years, along with zoning board meetings. And I must say that I am really totally appalled at the way the meeting was conducted today. That people can come in without ever working with a city manager, or a city attorney and just automatically say, you're fired. I think it's really terrible and I only hope that the city doesn't have to suffer from it. Thank you. My name is Ben Colley. I live at 23035 Vassar, Hazel Park. Um, I'd just like to bring up a few points to these uh, citizens that have taken the time to come out here tonight. I'm a little reluctant to believe that the firemen are running the city. The firemen are 18 people. Before the election, that's when the old council or any other candidate needed your support. That is when you should have brought your complaints or any grievances to the attention. What I would like to suggest is that you try to work with this council. They are, each and every one of them, responsible for their actions. Yes, you can recall them. That is what our form of government means. We can recall them, if you so choose. I would also like to take this time to ask uh, the new acting city manager uh, is there any way that the public can find out how much money was spent 
on the public safety vote election to mail out cards to my house, to uh, send leaflets, signs, and other various materials. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill McCann. I live at 820 East Robert. I too have an interest in the community. I'd like to congratulate those who are serving for the first time this evening. I must admit I am not happy with what I have seen watching at home. That is why I'm here. The basic issues I will not rehash. I think the thing that bothers me the most and I sat up there for 12 years, and I know there's a history in this town up on the wall, is for your new acting attorney to come into this town and start lecturing us as if we are a small town. When he told you that the charter was set up that all five would be elected, he doesn't know his history. That's not in the charter, and I will wait the necessary time, sir, if you will find it. The reason it's not in there, sir, of course, is that the odd year election law was mischievous with our charter. And I would hope that the gentlemen that are up there would recognize clearly we all take an oath of office, and part of it is to the city charter. But state law in every aspect, of course, circumvents the charter. So don't make the mistake of sitting home and reading the charter and then acting on it, either publicly or otherwise, without reviewing that. Because that's why you will need an attorney. The book in front of Mr. Binkley is a compilation of the ordinances of this town because as years go by, those ordinances add and subtract. Do not want to take up your time. It's a long evening for you. It doesn't look good at home, but it really bothered me to have this community lectured like it was a civics class. Thank you. the three people who voted to fire these two people will not read this to the community. I feel it's my duty to let you know why they were fired, according to them. Mr. Lloyd stated they were fired because Mr. Potter signed a contract that violated page C24, chapter 6, section 616 of our charter. It's a very short paragraph. I'd like to read it to you and you make your decision as to whether you think signing a contract violates these words. Notwithstanding any other uh, provisions of this charter, the tenure of office of the city manager or any appoint officer appointed by him shall not be terminated for a period of not less than 90 days after the date the new council takes office, except for misfeasance, malfeasance, or nonfeasance in office. No employee except temporary employees hired by the city manager shall be discharged within the above mentioned period except for misfeasance, malfeasance, or nonfeasance. That is section 6.16. I see nothing in there about contracts. I see nothing in there how signing a contract, contract violates this particular section which they made their whole decision on.
this uh, reports. I already closed. I already closed discussion. I already closed discussion. Uh, reports uh, from the city manager. Um. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Motion to receive items one through receive and file items one through seven. Support. Any discussion? Okay. Number eight. Uh, schedule of meetings of the uh, council, city council, and various boards and commission. Motion receive and file, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? There's no support. No. I'm sorry. Any discussion? So be. Uh, number nine, vacancy planning commission. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Banker. I'd like to submit the name of Mr. Tom Turner to replace Francis Bradley on the planning commission. Support. Okay. Any discussion? Unless someone else has some other names, okay, I'd like you to got any other thing. names? No. You mm -hmm. can okay. just make the appointment. Okay. Uh, so, Tom, you understand the planning commission? Uh, pension board of trustees. We handled that one. Did we? Oh no, we got a. Yeah, one. Mr. Trattier's uh, terms okay. expired. Term, terms expired. Uh, and a pension. Uh, pension Board of Trustees. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Binkley, you're already on the pension yes, board, I am. right? Uh, nominate uh, Mr. Goss to be on the pension board. Support. Speak up, Gary, to the mic. To support. <laughs> I've made the motion to support Mr. or made the motion that Mr. Goss be on the uh, Pension board. Support. Any other? Okay. Any discussion? Just, just um, uh, we should probably direct Mr. Shipman just to make. Uh, I don't. Has, has the mayor ever served in that position? Yes. Okay. Fine. Just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Number uh, ten. Uh, Eighty-six board of review appointments. <laughs> Mayor. Mr. Lloyd. I make a motion to table that at this time. Support. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Mayor. Um, one of the reasons I supported this because we just got this information with our packet and, you know, we didn't even know this was coming up. They have to be appointed in January. Yeah, okay, we, can, we have one more meeting to do this in? Okay. And I would recommend that we all look in uh, either these gentlemen that are on here now or just some uh, new people for the uh, board. Okay. 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 Uh, number eleven. Uh, director, direct of public safety request to be sent TCO section uh, seven. Seven. Number five five nine. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Banklin. Motion to concur with the Director of Public Safety as approved by the City Manager to rescind Section 7 of Traffic Control Order Number 559, which deals with handicapped parking at the residence of 26 East Milton. Support. Support. Okay, let's put that. Any discussion? Okay. Over. Uh, number 12, Parks and Rec Forestry Directory Repair to uh, Boom Truck. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Harrison. I'd like to make the motion that uh, we go ahead with this. Support. All right. Motion by Mr. Harris. Support Mr. Bankley. Any, uh, any uh, discussion? All right. So be. Um, 
number 13, library director, now a proposed proposal for funds. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bankley. Motion to regretfully receive and file. Support. <laughs> Any uh, discussion? Yes. I hope the council is aware because we have been denied this. This money was going to be used to repair the roof of the library. That's one of the major things, which means we would have to seek other funding to do this job or pay for it ourselves. I think we should stop and think of where we're going to get that money at this point. I believe it also had something to do with the parking lot that was going to be yes, I constructed. So. You can kiss that one goodbye too. Any other discussion? OB. Uh, number 14, City Attorney, Time Zone Arcade. Uh, Mr. Shipman, would you? I only comment that this memo is not from me. It's a memo from Mr. Petroskis indicating that the Zoning Board of Appeals refused to grant the variance, which would have allowed the use of pool tables over at the Time Zone Arcade. And he asks what you want him to do, and I think I know what the answer is. We want to close the Time Zone Arcade legally as soon as possible, and I'll take that to be my charge. I think that we should be issuing tickets on a daily basis. My understanding is that there are pool tables in there. We should contact Judge Agnello and start trying these cases on a daily basis and maybe the time zone arcade will get the message that they're not going to stay open uh, and that they will be removed legally. That would be my response. Mr. Shepard. One of the comments that Mr. Petruskis makes here is uh, that uh, we could enjoin those pool tables. I'm assuming that means to remove them. Uh, what, what is the potential legally if we do that? Uh, can that owner, if, you know, they are in violation right now of current uh, zoning ordinances. If the judge signs a court order and you're acting in your capacity as city officials, you're pretty safe because you're dependent on a judge signing an injunctive order saying you shall not operate with those pool tables. So he's the one that's made that decision. It's not your decision. The decision is a court order signed by the judge in joining mm -hmm. that. So if in fact the judge will sign such an order, let's go for it. So moved. So moved. Support. Support. In other words, uh, the pool tables are going to go, right? Yeah. Number 50. Can you answer that? I guess everybody wants to vote yes or yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? Everybody wants to vote. I'm sorry. Okay, number 16, uh, number 15, I'm sorry. Accounting supervisor, transfer of funds, draperies for West Wall building. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Harrison. I uh, would like to uh, receive the file list, please. I can make a motion we receive the file. We can't, uh, Mr. We uh, they're asking for approval, Mr. Harrison. Oh, they are, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Harrison. I make a motion we table it at this time. These drapes are already put in? No. I understand they have a problem that's very cold on uh, that side of the building. And that's the idea behind these drapes. That's all I know about it at this time. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Motion Mayor. to approve. Support. Any other discussion? Number 16, Accounting Supervisor, Federal Revenue Sharing Funds. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Harrison. I'd like to receive the file, please. Make a motion to receive the file. I'll support that motion, but I think this memo should be read to the public. Okay. Fine. Let me uh, do so. This is a uh, memo of the Federal Revenue Sharing Funds, which I believe all you know is in the news right now quite a bit. The Federal Revenue Sharing Program, entitlement number 17, has been cut by $381,000 by budget conferences in Washington. It is intent that this program be fully funded for the first three quarters and that the above mentioned reduction take place in the federal fiscal year fourth quarter ending September 30th, 1986. 
to the city of Hazel Park, federal revenue sharing has meant $396,000 for the current entitlement period, number 16. In as much as this program is scheduled to be fully phased out after fiscal 86, the loss of the above revenue will amount to the loss of funding for at least 10 city employees. In as much the preparation of the next city budget is about to begin, additional adjustments in personnel staffing should be begin in the state. Thank you. I have a question for uh, Mrs. Manning. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Manning, but doesn't that whole $396,000 go into the police and fire budget? I would have to check into that. Okay. Please do, because I believe it does. So that means those 10 people would probably come out of those two departments. I would think if the money's being cut from that particular budget. But could you please verify that? I believe it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, discussion on that? Uh, okay. uh, number 17, Bowers Foster Incorporated, appointment of member representative. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Make Mayor. Make a motion we appoint our city manager, uh, whoever that may be, to serve in this capacity. Support. Any discussion? Number 18, Fire Chief of uh, New Job Classification Public Safety Director. This is a uh, notation from the... Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Harrison. We receive a file. Support with a comment. Fine, Mr. Franklin. Mr. McVeigh states in here, the fire department services has deteriorated considerably and the fire prevention area under past administrative policies. I suggest that the new that a new position of public safety director of public services would only deteriorate services further, both in the fire safety and law enforcement areas of operation. Basically, what he's well, he's saying what he just said. I guess my my question is is uh, Mr. McVeigh has been the fire chief for quite a while. Why is he just now bringing the, to our attention the fact? that fire department services have deteriorated considerably in the fire prevention area. They didn't just deteriorate today because we made a new appointment. And I think it's his job to notify us, not just when he decides that he disagrees with an appointment that we're going to make and how it's been deteriorating. We should have been notified of this long before the appointment was ever made. So this council could be made, be made aware of that fact before they voted on it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McVeigh uh, wrote the letter. Why don't we uh, bring him in at the next council meeting and uh, let him explain it to you, Mr. Baker? That'd be fine. I'd love yeah, to ask him. Uh, Requested, Mr. McVeigh, be here for the next council meeting to explain that. Okay. Support. Support. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, number 19. Uh, City managers, city explanation related to the recent proposal combining police, fire department, public safety. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Banquet. Motion to receive and file. Support. Any other discussion? I think we should probably answer Mr. Colley's question. Okay, well that's right. He took the time to answer it. Right. Under newsletters, or ask it, excuse me. Under newsletters, two general information newsletters on public safety mailed in January and May, printing $1,225, postage $1,253.01, total expenditure $2,478.01. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, we have some other things to add to the agenda that are not on the agenda that you have in your packets. Um, I move that these be added to the end as number uh, 20, 21, 22, 
Council to approve the following uh, transfer of funds uh, to the library director. from the fire department to for equipment purchase. How much? Uh, $236,000. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I think. That's $236. That's what I said. $36,000? No. no, I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 You're giving me heart failure, Mike. said thousand. No, 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 no. Yeah, we want to buy a new fire truck. I missed no. that one. <laughs> I said dollars. I'm sorry if it misinterpreted. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Uh, number uh, 22 is the Oakland County Board of Commissioners meeting. And 22, I seem to misplace that. What is that? That's that new one. We've already. Okay, the corrected memo you've already moved up, so you can. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. That's that. right. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay, any motions on those? Have we added the uh, court recording equipment? Okay, that'd be 23, that's the one. Uh, have we added the deletions of the sidewalk roll? Okay, that's the one that I was looking for. I think that covers them. Okay. They're under here, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I'll move that we add these items. Yeah. Support. Support. Okay. <coughs> any discussion? <coughs> <coughs> okay. <You move. coughs> Excuse me. All right, we'll go through these items. Don't okay, fade Mark. We're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Mike. Okay. Uh, all right. Number number twenty is the request to council approve the following uh, transfer of funds of uh, fourteen hundred and sixty-five dollars to the library director from the. Uh, so move, Mayor. To approve. To approve. Support. Support. Any discussion? So be it. Uh, number 21 is the uh, request of approval of a transfer of $236 from the fire department account to the equipment purchase fund. Support. Support. Make a motion. <laughs> make a motion to make we uh, long the funds. <laughs> okay, any support? Support. Okay. Uh, number 22 is the Oakland County Board of Committees uh, Commissioners of uh, Commissioners meeting. No, no more. Uh, but the count the court recording equipment next. We have, we've got two more items yet. Yeah. Oh, I thought I had that. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, call okay, recording. Okay, uh, that would be the. Uh, uh, court recording equipment. They request uh, approximately seven thousand dollars to be uh, for us to authorize the transfer uh, from the inappropriate fund balance to the equipment purchase fund uh, and authorize bids for this equipment. Move to approve. Before. Any discussion? Oh, yeah. Let me just suggest that the city manager talk to the court administrator. There's major changes taking place in recording devices right now. Just be sure if you're going to spend money that you spend it for the up-to-date equipment. Because there's changes every day. I just want to be sure that they're buying the top of the line uh, that isn't going to be obsolete in a year, two years from now. So I would suggest that. I think Mrs. Townsend, the court administrator, uh, had some input into getting this on the agenda. I have not seen the memo, so I'm just making a small suggestion. <coughs> okay. Um, 
Okay, this is, uh, this is 23, the invalid, the following three addresses, dr addresses, 1107 East Myers, 23826 Towers, and 23060 uh, Stuber, Stauber, uh, to be uh, placed back on the um, sidewalk wall. Some move. Some, well, now you two are doing it. Okay. No discussion? Okay. Now, reports from the uh, boards. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Bradley. Move to receive and file the reports. Support. So be it. Now we open the communications from the mayor and council. I have nothing to say. I'm a lost for words. Well, I had a couple questions I wanted to ask the city manager, but obviously that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> well, Mrs. Manny, could you check into this for me? Um, I know it's not fair to you to ask either because you weren't prepared for this, but um, have we hired the new blight inspector? Rick Burrell is a dispatcher in the police department. He posted for this position and he started work today. Okay, I was just curious as to why we weren't notified of that, I guess. That's why I was asking. I, know I think he has a 30-day under the union contract when he posted the position. Mm -hmm. You have 30 days uh, to get in touch with him and say, you know, fill that position or go back to your old job. So that might be why they're uh, mm -hmm. putting that time in. Okay. I can't think of anything else. Thank you. Mr. Lloyd? Okay, uh, since I made the motion, uh, I'm going to say something about Mr. Uh, Potter and Mr. Petroskas. I don't think anybody ever uh, took the time. We're talking about money. We're not talking about nickel and dime contracts here. I don't think anybody ever took the time when these contracts were uh, made, at the time of they were made, the last council meeting, nobody explained dollars and cent wise to the uh, public. We're talking uh, close to a quarter million dollars, if not more, in uh, two contracts that was approved. As far as Mr. Potter goes, he uh, knew at the time he was supposed to uh, work at the pleasure of the council. I can't understand why he would go ahead and take a contract, knowing full well that a new council was coming in. That shows me right away that he doesn't intend to work with us. You don't take contracts, violate the city charter, when you're supposed to be working at the pleasure of the council. And I just can't believe he would do something like that. It, it just makes me sick, the whole thing. I, I am not. He takes a contract and robs the citizens out there of this kind of money, and nobody cares. It just, the citizens out there, they don't care. Were you at the last party special? Where were, I'd like to know where were the people when these contracts were approved? Nobody asked any questions about how much money. The money was not in the paper. The money was not in the paper. Well, that's what I have to say. And I'm telling you. He's supposed to work at the pleasure of the council, right? He was. That was the council, and that's who he was working for. Now, you're a new council. If you didn't like the contract, do away with the contract, but work with the man. I stated my motion and why I did it, okay? Yeah. I'd like to see at your job some guy come up and say, Jesus, the yeah. last boss that was in here gave you a raise, and now that I'm taking over, you're down the road. Please, please. That makes a real, that makes a lot of sense. Mr. Car please. That's all I have to say. Mr. Harrison. Yes, I have a few comments. Uh, no, I don't want to hear your I, I feel, I feel i done this out of, out of my, from my conscience, uh, I feel that Mr. Potter and the city attorney took advantage of the city uh, to protect their own self. They wouldn't give us a chance. We were willing to give them a chance. And all we were waiting for, if they would have took the contracts, then this is what would have happened. If they, if they wouldn't have took the contracts, we would have been willing to work with those people. They took the contracts. 
We've asked them questions. They did not work with us. There was a memo sent out to all the department heads not to give us information unless it was public information. Then Mr. Potter was going to determine if it was public information or not. Now that's not right. You know, we, 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 all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No. This uh, is it's far, it's far. This is not public discussion. This making his comments, please. The firemen did support us because we were, were not for public safety. The people voted in, in June, and it, the charter the charter amendment says that they, they would get their two firemen. That's the only thing we promised the firemen, that they would get their two firemen, according to what the charter says. Now, we, as a council, okay, we as a council up here, we're, we're supposed to work together. There's no doubt about it. Right. Now, we, as far as uh, seeing Mr. Schiffman here, uh, uh, I've talked to Mr. Schiffman. Uh, I think uh, all of us has talked to Mr. Schiffman, except Mr. Binkley and Mrs. Brad. Wait a minute. Calm down. Is this comment, comment? Number one, number one. Mr. Binkley was on the council at the time. Two weeks ago, you said you'd never talk to him. Just pause one more. But I, I feel that we've done the right thing up here. Thank you. I don't want you to go out here. I don't say you paid a park car three bonds like you. I don't know. Let me. As mayor, I get to the last comment. I've sat here and I've listened to all your comments. <laughs> Sir, please. I've sat up here and listened to all your comments and you have the right to make those comments as citizens of this city. I had to do a lot of thinking on this before I made a decision. A lot of people might not think so, but I did. And I did talk to Mr. Binkley, as well as I have talked to Mr. Lloyd and Mr. Harrison. And I apologize to you, Ms. Bradley, that I did not talk to you. I think you should. I, I offer you my apology now, that I did not talk to you. But I came to the conclusion, and not only on that statement, but also on a a lot of other things in the charter that I believe that Mr. Potter and Mr. Petrowskis was not following the city charter. Mr. Petrowskis stated at the last council meeting that we do not always follow what the charter says. And as I stated earlier, the charter was put down by the people of this city, and it's true. And that is what this council goes by. When those contracts were offered a month ago, they were offered on the basis of protecting the two gentlemen for their jobs. It took away, actually, all rights that we had. Well, oh, there was the 90-day period in there, but it took all the rights that we had as far as anything to do with those gentlemen. Because if we try to remove them, we still have to pay them off. Now, they came back two weeks ago, and they had a chance of turning those contracts down, but no, they just even fought harder for them and said, oh, these are good contracts. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, you people out there tonight have been screaming that you're going to have recall and this and that. That's fine. That's, that's your prerogative. And I won't argue with you. But I had to make a decision, and I did make the decision. I could have went either way. And I thought over it a lot. And like I said, there's probably ones out there that think, oh, no. But I did. Whatever we do at this table, as this, as this council, 
we're going to try very hard to make this city a very progressive type of city that it isn't right now. And anybody out there that can tell me how much the city has progressed in the last five or six years, you show me. We've got empty lots, we've got old buildings standing around, and we've got projects that keep getting turned down. And we've got enough blight in this city, if we don't start improving it, we're not going to have anything. What's your proposal? What is my proposal? All my proposal is, is we're going to start working to make this city a better place to live and make it the place that Hager Park used to be. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Support. Support. Support.